Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. I've got some custom 4v4 fun coming your way this afternoon chaps because apparently I've been focusing too much of late on the old custom 1v1 or ladder business and if that's the case and you team players are feeling left out I do apologise I aim to rectify it this afternoon but not before I have done my uh, little salesman pitch. It's been a while since I've done it I hope you won't mind because of course it is after all the purpose of this little series going out to my newest subscribers first of all hello and welcome guys great to have you on board hope you like the channel and if you like what you're looking at but you're not 100 percent sure what it is you are looking at the game is supreme commander forged alliance it's available on steam for 10 pounds or 15 us dollars or whatever the equivalent is in your local currency and once you have that game installed and it doesn't matter if you have the digital edition or a retail copy of the game all you need to do to come play with us is download the forged alliance forever multiplayer client and you can find a link to that in the description below this video that's really important guys i can't stress it enough what will that help me do i hear you say well it is quite simple it'll allow you to play with up to seven to eight hundred players online at peak times it'll allow you to browse the replay vaults the map vaults the forums all laid on free of charge and on top of that it'll allow you to play with any of a number of integrated mods that have been clever cleverly plugged into the thing with computers and <laughs> stuff like that. i just do pr I, have no, I don't i don't know i don't do anything to the it you know what i'm saying but anyway come join us it's a great place to hang out um that's completely thrown me uh the game is gonna be a 4v4 it's gonna take place on wonder so let's go oh let's just go over to the thing there we go amazing <laughs> good start guile immense all right we'll call this team one up here at the top and this team two down at the bottom if you bear with me i'll bring up the old player sheet there there we go and for team one first of all running rear guard air right at the back here elephantine gray we have pass or per se depending on where in the world he's from we're going to call him pass though because it's easier and I'm simple uh, and he's opening first land and over in the east team member number two for team one if I get him in shot there it is it's Milkit and he's going mellow yellow Cybrin also opening first land thirdly here for team one here it's cybergenics in pontiff white he's going uef also opening first land and not wishing to break with tradition also going first land last but not least for team one it's aurelius nl don't know if that means if he comes from new zealand or something or uh, whatever we call him aurelius he's going a baby blue fim so that's team one and we'll take a look at team two running rear guard air position here for team two in ferrari red my good friend gfy is the pony he's going fim and opening first air of course getting the uh, beautiful bonus that they get to the engineer drop off times makes it a great expansionist choice secondly for team one is the conqueror and he is going aeon opening first and second land halley borange orange thirdly for team one over here in baby pink it's psycho ad ad psycho ad psycho i'm just gonna be calling him psycho anyway he's going cyberin and he opened first land and last but not least a woman in our midst it's zoria 67 i spoke to this lady on comms the other night boy she likes her wine anyway that's another story she's going uef in breast cancer awareness pink supporting the ladies i like it and she's open first second third fourth fifth land going land all the way so anyway those are the teams i don't know how we're going to get through this cast today i've just wrecked it but it's fine and uh, we've got a few units creeping north here from team two the conqueror just placing a lab and a spirit there a little scout try and pick off an engineer as it comes that way from milkit try and pick up those mexes probably going to be successful there's nothing in the area that's going to be able to help that ng and uh, psycho has uh, got an engineer or two in the area so much mass in the middle here look at all these rocks there's also the occasional t3 structure or t3 uh unit wreck dotted around there's a titan kicking around this so there's tons of reclaim to be had in the middle and uh, cybergenics and psycho both getting their greedy podgy little fingers on it asap milk it gonna throw down a pd here to stop the advancements of the conqueror and what Oh, it's not because of what I said, is it? Zoria DCs early on. She must have had too much wine and fallen asleep on the off button of her computer. Down it goes, but what a shame. 
And uh, that'll be an early ejection from the game. And in a terrible, terrible position now for Team 2 losing a player after just three minutes. It'll be tough for them to claw their way back into this. But what have we got here? It looks like a cheeky NG drop from Deponi. You can see he's got a waypoint here right up to the corner. And it's going to be dropping them off right in the back. And loath as I am to use anything anywhere near StarCraft terminology, I'm going to hazard a guess and say the pony is going for the old proxy base up here at the back. That's a very nicely positioned Mantis, though, for Milkit. That could cause some problems if he catches sight of it on the way past. It's becoming a feature of the pony's play of late. He's being very, very cheeky with these early drops. We'll take a look at Milkit. And dropping them off literally right by it. The question is, will the pony be quick enough with the reclaim? There it goes. Yes, it is. Saves all three of those engineers. I'm hoping for Team 1's sake that they were paying attention to that, or at least Milkit was paying attention to it. Finally, that lab gets knocked aside after claiming what looks like at least two engineers out of... Uh, that uh, early little game there but making life very difficult indeed but what are those engineers up to they're building tons upon tons of land factories and that could be a major issue for team one and i'm not seeing anything kind of being dispatched up this way for milkit either he must be aware that engineers have been dropped off here that first factory of the ponies is expansionist in nature producing engineers that are going to be working on some static d i like that play <clears throat> lots of uh, anti-air being placed the pd further up a radar it's going to make this a place a little home for him to stay for the uh, next uh, coming moments in the game doesn't want to be brushed aside so that is going to be a tricky little situation for them to deal with but Milkit now pushing forward with his ACU and a handful of Mantis. Conqueror standing very nearby with his ACU. He's going to start working on the Mantis to thin them out. But not only does he have problems directly in front of him from Milkit, he's also got a handful of Strikers coming in from Cybergenics. Of course, Auroras generally don't fare quite so well against the Strikers in close quarters, but the ACU doing just enough to brush those units aside. However, it has bought Milkit enough time with those Mantis to, I think, potentially finish off this last factory. It's down to around 300 hit points, but Conqueror's moving in with his own Auroras now, and Milkit's forced to back up, but Cybergenics is going to turn up at the last moment and surely will be able to brush aside that factory. He is focusing on the Auroras for the moment, but I'm sure he will pick that off any minute now. It's still producing Auroras. Probably a good idea to throw a couple of bolts into that and finishing that off ASAP. Milkit back up he's down to around 7300 hit points so he's taken a few hits already but Cybergenix manages to finish off that factory but he goes down to the yellow as well he's down to around 7000 hit points now Conqueror backing up he's on around 5000 himself but Cybergenix needs to be careful here he probably hasn't got access to overcharge no he attack. doesn't and that's a lot of Auroras in the area that are now primarying the ACU. He's down to around 3,000 hit points. He is backing up, but he's going to have to do a little dance and move backwards sharpish if he wants to get out of this. Milkit, wisely recognizing the danger to his teammate, has moved forward with his ACU. But, oh my goodness, Cybergenics, get your big metal backside out of there. Drops down to around 390 hit points and keeps running. The Auroras are beginning to pursue... 180 hit points on the clock oh my god one heavy sneeze and that acu would explode but i think he might potentially get out of it milkin is primarying the commander at the moment he needs to finish off the auroras of course because the auroras would catch that acu luckily of course there is an auto gun in the area cybergenics down to around 200 still turning around to swat the occasional aurora that comes to cl close but conqueror can't pursue he's down into the red 2100 hit points on the clock he's going to have to break off that attack and that is going to be really annoying they had a chance there to finish that acu but of course cybergenics is backing up to what he thinks is safe territory but this is a thriving thrumming proxy base from deponi with one two three four five six land factories and climbing and now there's a ton of Zooies and Thams in the area and Cybergenics gets a nice rank up in veterancy at just the right moment. But he's definitely not safe. You can see these Thams closing in and suddenly 
They're beginning to realize the problems they're in. Milkit's base has been effectively wiped out. He's got nothing to play with. He's got a land factory. He's got an air factory. But that's it. He has no eco whatsoever. Milkit, four mass per tick and 20 income coming from the power side of things. But now these two looking very, very hemmed in. And of course, Milky doesn't want to go pop in the explosion if Cybergenics can't make it out of here. Aurora's coming in as well as the Pony's Thams. But has Cybergenics come in with enough strikers to keep himself alive? Down to 600 hit points. And again, the units run dry from Team 2. Cybergenics looking so very unhealthy. But more units, of course, building up at the back here all the time. We're going to have to go, though, to split screen because there is action happening, of course, down here at the bottom. Aurelius has pushed quite hard on that vacant area of the map. But Cybergenics down to 300. And again, more units pressing. Down he goes. Nice snag there from Deponi. So out goes the middle player there for Team 1. Beautiful proxy base action, and got to give it to Taponi. He's expanded out west as well. He looks like he's going to have struggle to hold on to these two factories, but he's had to push as quickly as possible to try and pick up this redundant section of the map, these mass points that were, went unclaimed after uh, Zoria made her ungraceful exit from the game. But onward press the forces of Aurelius and I think this is going to be just too difficult for Team 2 to hang on to. Aurelius looking rather dangerous here on this section of the map. He's got a decent eco going but uh, Deboni looking very strong and pass as well. Rearguard players always do. You've got some mercies at the back here as well. Stacking up from pass. We're really looking for a commander to snipe. There is the conqueror back here. And a quick push could probably pick up the kill. One, two, three, four, five. Mercies and climbing. I think that's all he needs. He's only got 3,500 hit points on the clock. He needs probably half of that many to finish off that commander. But the interceptors are out. Looks like they could be scouting for a com. <coughs> and all the hard work gained by Team 2 could just be about to go out the window if they lose the Conqueror. So much action. Two players gone from the game within 10 minutes. But off go the Mercies. Of course, uh, Zori's exit down to any particular action in the game. But now he realizes there isn't a great deal or indeed any real air threat over this side of the map. He's going to be able to get those Mercies in without any difficulty. Seems to be just dispatching three because he surely knows he doesn't need all of them. Or he's sending the others further back in case he needs them. One of them has activated. Oh! Boom, baby! And down goes the Conqueror on the dot of 10 minutes. It was meant to be not looking so much the Conqueror right now. He did do rather a decent job over on the right-hand side. What are you going to do when you get Mercy sniped like that? Apart from build lots of T2 flak. That was meant to be sarcastic, but you know what I mean. Anyway, this little attack over on this hand side, petering out from Aurelius, but a large wave of reinforcements coming down here through the furthermost western edge of the gaming area and Psycho Ad, Psycho AD throwing together as many Cerberus turrets as he can muster and get a bit of a point defense creep over this way he might be able to seal off this area and prevent Aurelius from pushing down any further with any more units definitely needs to seal the breach ASAP so they can reclaim all these mechs as you can see Aurelius doing his utmost best to deny to access to any of these mexes doesn't want them picking up any more uh, of an advantage of course now we've got Deponi expanding into the conqueror's old slot lots of reclaim to be had lots of mexes to pick up and it really is going to come down to how well team one can deal with Deponi now this is looking like uh, oh, this would look pretty good if this was your whole base right now and this is just a proxy but uh, indeed, they have major troubles. They've got to clear this out as soon as possible. But uh, Pass has made transition to T2 Air, so he's got a decent amount of Spectres on the field. That will be a nice way to counter this T1 spam that's coming his way. But we do have a T2 Land Factory HQ. You might think that that's a little bit risky, throwing uh, your HQ that far forward. But of course, that might give him access to some floating flak, or some flak, sorry, that would be ideal to counter these gunships. It's got a lot of T1 mobile flak in there, but you can see how woeful their damage is. These uh, gunships can more or less tank it while they go after 
Noble Flak take them out of commission and then finish off all of the Thams. But uh, I'd love to see what uh, Team 1 have in store. Of course, but effectively out of the game, Milkit, he still has uh, an ACU in play, but uh, no real eco. So it is definitely and definitively a 2 on 2 right now with an extra ACU going towards Team 1. But uh, pass looking pretty good on the old eco front. 72 mass protect against the Deponies 61. 8,000 reclaim. But uh, Deponi on 14,000 reclaim doing considerably better on that front. And finally those spectres are shooed away. And it wasn't in fact floating back or rather mobile flak. It was a Sinatha, a static flak that's been put together. That Deponi who seems dead set on maintaining the space as well he should it's providing a very nice angle of attack on his opponents it's forcing them to divert resources up here you can see the amount of units from Aurelius that are being forced up this way to try and counter this continuous stem this continuous flow of units sorry from the pony I'm sure he'd love to just be sending them down here against Psycho who is just building PD all day <coughs> And he's doing a pretty good job, actually, of uh, what we were doing earlier, talking about earlier, sealing off this breach, stopping any more units coming down this way. That's going to allow them, hopefully, to snag these mass points. Absolutely vital, of course, that they do so, especially since the uh, pass seem to be getting ahead of the Pony and Eco. But that is, incidentally, no longer the case. The Pony has caught up pass and uh, more or less overtaken him now. But Aurelius, 84 mass, is echoing like a boss. And you place that up against, of course, uh, Psycho, who's on just 54. Team 1 still ahead, even though map control-wise, it looks like they're doing significantly better. Of course, the longer it goes on, you're going to favor map control team rather than the uh, turtling team. But pass moving forward and firing pretty quickly with the ACU there. Let's take a look if he's got the upgrade. I think he probably has Commander under attack. on the uh, the gun there. The DD has the quantum accelerator. But that's an awful lot of units he's standing by. He wants to try and take out some of this build capacity with an overcharge. That would be ideal. The, uh, this build capacity focusing on this tactical missile launcher cause real problems for... The core mass there from Pass, I suspect that's what's drawn the commander in. He wants to take that out, but he hasn't managed it. He's got to pull back. The Spectres come in to assist the commander there, but they're taking some long-range fire from the Sinatha back here. And boom, down they go. Pass down to around 6,000 hit points. He's going to have to be really careful here. Doesn't want to risk throwing away his comm. That will be game over for Team 1. Well, as Aurelius has been doing, he's not going to be able to contend with that if he loses that rear guard player. And still that tactical missile launcher alive and kicking. And you can see the vacant mass points here in Pass's territory and how that's much that's allowed Deponi to get ahead of Pass in the eco game. Large group of NG's. No, reclaim mission there from Deponi searching for more reclaim but we do have ASFs now on the field for pass he's made the transition to T3 air how does that stack up against Deponi it doesn't who's basically ignored air except for T1 phase he's gone mass T1 in terms of intercepts mass T1 factories but he hasn't made any move towards tech in the air yet at all so if we get a few more of those ASFs on the field, Team 2 are going to have to watch out for threats from the air. But this is turning into a much more static war now here. Bit of a point defense war between Aurelius and Psycho. Aurelius deciding to push forward again with looks like a ton of Thams and the odd Zui. Zui's of course vital in taking out the point defense. Also got a few mobile missile launchers in there, but the Zappers have been contending with that quite nicely. Finally, that point defense dies off, but at what cost? So much T1 getting obliterated. Psycho decides to have a bit of a probe as well, but there's also a lot of static T2 PD in place there for Aurelius. 
And now Mil Milkit moving in with his commander pass, still very low. 3,400 hit points on his comm, but they're both doing a little bit of a double comm push. Finally, that attack missile launcher has been taken out of commission. And these two ACUs with a few units might just be able to brush aside this proxy base. And if that's the case, that could be a strong advantage growing there for Team 1, despite all of uh, Dapony's work. Look at... Uh, of no use in this game now with the exception of that ACU so he needs to just get in there and use it pass needs to get moving he's taking an awful lot of Zui fire 2600 hit points he recognizes the danger and starts to move a little bit of micro and finally that land factory that T2 headquarters like it could be about to die out just needs one or two more hits 660 hit points but an overcharge from pass finishes it off and I think that will spell the end for that proxy base from Dupony but it's definitely definitely proved cost effective keep an eye on what's going on down here the war rages although for no real gain on either side at the moment however I think the accumulation the amassing of mobile missile launchers for Aurelius might just be enough to break through this little line of PD yes there are a few zappers in place for Psycho but it's gonna be tough they actually seem to be primarying the commander now surely they will be retargeted Look at still strutting his stuff up here by the proxy base. Blapping away at the fams with that commander. Aurelius could do with moving these tanks in. And now we have restorers on the field as well from pass. That is going to be tough. But there's a congregation of engineers down here for Dupony. And he's going for an experimental bomber just 17 minutes in. And he looks the best part of 25% done on it and climbing. Or around about that anyway. And this is where Team 1 are going to need to get scouting soon. They need, they need to recognize the danger because if that gets finished, that could be game over for Team 1. I know uh, experimental bombers don't have the best reputation, but remember, this is very early game. There are not a lot of ASFs on the field. There are literally the odd one dotted here and there from pass, and you need a sizable bunch to be able to effectively deal with those bombers cannot rely on just a handful the AA on that bomber will deal with those very effectively indeed still that climbs how is the pony doing on eco using up every last ounce of mass as well you would expect it to when you've got that many engineers on an experimental as expensive as that and he's uh, long since stopped production of all of the units coming out of that proxy base he's happy to let that die off now but this is going to be absolutely crucial for team one they need to spot this and they need to spot this soon down here just feels like a battle beginning to go Aurelius's way point defense being placed online a little bit of a creep going on and now some t1 and t2 mixed units coming in onto psycho's position we need to take out that shield gen finally it collapses under the weight of fire bearing down upon it and down it goes and now psycho is a little bit exposed but he's bringing in a lot of his own t1 and t2 to deal with this attack and it should brush it aside very effectively indeed. That shouldn't be a problem for him. But of course, now all of this has been freed up. It's going to be easy for Aurelius to push in different areas. These restorers have free reign to take out everything around here. But it's all unupgraded T1. It's not going to hurt Team 2 too badly. That bomber looking to be around 60% complete now. There or thereabouts. 
This is a very risky proposition from the pony who definitely knows that it's uh, uh, an all or nothing play. If he doesn't get that online, they are going to lose this. And those mi missile launchers, mobile missile launchers, just taking their toll on static defense here of Psycho. And now the Restorers are just in the area where they might be alerted to this bomber's construction. They're going to fly past. They're going to see the engineers. And they're going to surely be retargeted to it. There wasn't a lot of anti-air down here earlier. And now they've realized it. Going after the engineers. Have, he hasn't seen it though. And there it is. And it's well into the green as well. This is sudden panic mode. GFY is the pony asking for all of the mass if you want. He wants to win. But at exactly the same time as well. It looks like the front line of Psycho might be crumbling a little bit. And I have to go back to Observer. And keep an eye on these two zones of combat. But these restorers can't get too close. There is some anti-air over here. It's enough to ward off those restorers. One of them popped out of the sky there. Of course, we have no idea how far along that, uh, that bomber is now to completion. And Psycho trying to spam together another line of Cerberus turrets, but I don't think he's going to manage it. We've got siege tanks entering the fray now from Aurelius. We have got a little bit of a push from T1 from Aurelius as well. If we can get down here and start knocking out some of this build capacity. There's virtually no PD around here. There's some T1 back here. Restore has come in again for a little bit of pop. He's going after the power mostly because he knows he can hit that effectively without being taken down. Down goes the hydrocarbon. But I don't think it's going to be causing Deponi any major trouble. But look at Psycho's front line. Just a couple of Cerberus turrets and his commander. But in comes the T1 going after all of the build capacity around this area. Which is trying to throw together point defense as quickly as possible. We have no idea though. How much is left on that bomber? There's still a lot of engineers inside the shield working on it. But the T1, T2 and T3 there for Aurelius has broken through. Psycho is backing up. He needs to overcharge those siege tanks. Still that T1 from Aurelius is wailing away on that bomber. The attack seems to be petering out over here. Left hand screen. Psycho should be able to deal with it. Not overcharged there, dealing with high value units or clump T1. But the bomber gets completed, and that is disastrous. Look how well Team 1 have done. They have completely wiped the floor with these guys so far because everything Deponi had was going into that bomber, but now it has got online. This may well change everything. Psycho finds himself completely surrounded. His front line dissolved in every way, shape, or form, and all of those units now targeting the commander. He goes pop at minute 23 on the nose. And the pony's base not looking healthy either, but the first pass from the bomber coming straight up ahead. Of course, that bomber only 24,000 hit points on the clock if they can devote absolutely everything to anti-air they might be able to shoot it down Aurelius is backed up over here is frantically building shield gens trying to keep his commander safe probably thinks if he can do that he's definitely got this game sewn up because look this is all that's left of Deponi's base he's got virtually nothing left he's got no eco it's all been taken out all he's got left is his bomber bombs away though right center mass in the center of passes base takes out several of those t3 p gens wipes out all the build capacity that was working on that gc and now is available to go hunting and of course all of that uh build capacity offering free veterancy has just ranked up that bomber 148 kills and kept him alive now 
this is going to be crucial. Going to have to focus on these two areas at the same time. Bomber comes in and lands a bomb directly on top of Pass's commander. He won't survive another attack. Meanwhile, though, onward presses Aurelius's units. Pony trying to throw together as many units of point defense as he can, but that bomber comes in for another pass. In comes the restorers to try and affect some damage, but boom! Down goes pass, and out he goes from the game. And Aurelius has had to back up with his units. Needs to consolidate his forces, get as much punching power as he can. There's a lot of T1 around here, though, and some more has been spammed up right in front of the commander question is will it hold and can that bomber take out Aurelius's comm in time first bomb impacts directly on top of the shield and doesn't collapse them it's not great news for the moment does this attack have enough punching power he needs to take down the shield gen ASAP but the units getting inside the shield are not surviving long enough to affect any damage but finally it goes down of course the pony has 18,000 hit points on that commander you saw him doing an upgrade there that was probably the nano upgrade increasing the repair capabilities and now those she siege tanks and Ilshivers just getting blapped but with overcharge and that attack promptly running out of steam where is that bomber it's over here going for the core base wants to stop production takes out a couple of t2 power gens and a lot of build capacity around that t3 Land headquarters comes in for another run. The shields, of course, have collapsed. There isn't enough power to run them. That bomb's going to land right on top of the commander. And all of those shield gens go down. That commander now with just 3,700 hit points on the clock there for Aurelius. Won't survive another bomb. He's on the move. <laughs> going to try and dodge. But those blast radius from those bombs are just incredible. There is literally no escape for him at this point, and I think it's safe to say that is going to be game for Team 2. Dipoli does it again with an outrageous comeback. Absolutely disgusting, my friend. Very, very entertaining to watch. And who'd have thought it the last person alive for Team 1 is Milkid. He's been trying to re-establish the base up here at the top. He would have done better, actually, to march down here with the ground units from... Aurelius and just go hell for leather try and build some point defense down here try and disrupt the battle overcharge some build capacity whatever it takes to try and knock out this commander I don't think it would have worked to be honest I mean he's got 59 kills only 12,000 hit points on the clock and that uh, commander's looking very beefy indeed there for Deponi but pop goes all of Aurelius's stuff in comes the bomber for oh, Deponi takes out everything except for one last engineer and of course that commander as uh, Milkit goes for a little bit of a stroll I think we can feel safe to knock that up a notch a little bit of a desync at the end there but we won't worry about that this game is uh, as over as it could possibly be getting a solution now on the commander can speed this up because I'm pretty sure Milkit's not going to do anything interesting. One bomb away. Kabam! Takes it down to virtually nothing. 1,100 hit points. And another pass will do it. Boom, baby! Very, very well played the pony once again. Awesome to watch. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. You think you can tell I certainly did. As always, keep the replays coming in. And as always, until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.